Hi everyone, I'm Gertie and welcome back to my online L'Amour Dress class. If you haven't seen the previous segments of this class, please do go ahead and catch up on those. And to catch you up on what we're doing here, this is the L'Amour Dress class that was previously on my Charm School site. It was a paid course. In light of current world events, I am releasing it to you free of charge. I want you to enjoy it. I want you to stay home and sew. So please enjoy the class. Also know that a lot has changed about the pattern since I released this class. We've now released it in sizes two through 20 with A through H cup sizes, as well as adding new design elements. So check it out, buy the pattern on the Charm site, subscribe to my channel, subscribe to me on Patreon, stay healthy, stay safe, and stay home and sew. And I'll see you soon. hem our dresses and I'm here on the floor because this is where I always mark my hems. So I always put my dresses on a hanger overnight or on the dress form directly and then let them stretch out on the bias. And you will notice a significant stretch depending on your fabric. Some stretches like a rayon chalet, they will like really dip down. This cotton uh, grew about half an inch on the bias portions of the dress, kind of at the princess seams. So you really do need to go back and re-level the hem now. So you have a couple options. You can put it on a dress form like this, or you can have someone else mark your hem while you're wearing it. So unfortunately, this is one of those things that you kind of need a buddy or a mannequin for. So um, go ahead and put your dress on your mannequin or try it on for someone. You're gonna need a yardstick and some sort of marking tool, okay? So what we're gonna do is figure out where we want the dress to end, what is our ideal finished height, and then you're gonna give yourself a little bit of a hem allowance from there. And just to kind of talk you through the hemming that I'm gonna be doing, um, I'm going to be using, in the directions, there's specified uh, directions for a three-step narrow hem. And that's what I'm gonna use on my lining because I really want to show you that method. It's one of my favorite hemming methods. But on the outer dress, a lot of fabrics, especially embroidered fabrics, eyelets, these little dots, they are not gonna do well with that three-step narrow hem because it is so fine. And these are actually too bumpy and thick to, to really do well with that kind of hem. So you're gonna see two different hemming methods, which is great. So on the outer dress, I'm gonna use a doubled up quarter inch hem and then I'm gonna hand stitch it. For the lining, I'm gonna use that three-step narrow machine hem. So you'll see both. I need to leave myself half an inch hem allowance on the outer dress and then three eighths of an inch for that three step narrow hem. So think about what hemming method you're gonna use and leave yourself um, the correct hem allowance. So I was kind of looking at where I wanted my dress to end and I'd like it to be, um, how was I measuring it? I would like it to be right around here where it says 21 now. So I'm gonna give myself another half an inch from there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a marking tool with my yardstick real flat on the floor here. And if you're not sure what hem length you like, um, you can always try on a dress that you own, see, um, measure the, the skirt on that, see what you like. I tend to like a little bit of a longer skirt because I tend to wear petticoats with my dresses. Oh, and that's another good note is that you don't wanna put a petticoat on your mannequin right now because that will just kind of um, obstruct your view while you're trying to uh, mark the hem on it as well as make things potentially uneven depending on the bunchiness of the petticoat in certain places. So no petticoat, I'm just, um, just have the lining and the outer dress. I'm gonna mark the outer dress first. So 21 and I'm gonna give myself half an inch from there. And I'm using this disappearing ink marker which is showing up really nicely on my green. So I'm gonna use that. If you don't have something that shows up well on your fabric, you can also stick a pin every um, couple inches and then trim away from there. So I'm gonna go around the entire dress like this, marking at 21 and a half. And I just kind of move the yardstick and mark about every two inches, I would say, is good. And I have in the past thought I would be really smart and mark my lining and my dress at the same time. But the thing is they do kind of shift around a lot 
and um, I tried to pin them both together and then trim them together and it didn't work. So now I'm gonna do these separately. I'm just focusing on the outer dress right now. So again, you can keep moving it around. The nice thing about the mannequin is it doesn't complain or shift or any of that stuff. And one thing to mention too is you wanna to make sure that the waistline in your dress is level when you put it on the dress form from front to back. So just check the waistline and pin it in place if needed. Okay, I've marked all the way around. Now I'm gonna take the dress off the dress form and I'm going to trim connecting those dots. I'm gonna trim right along the line that I've made. And if you, it makes you nervous to trim with just those um, marks every couple inches. You can connect them with a ruler, but I kind of just trim from there. Rotary cutter, rotary cutter is great for that. You can do it really fast. And then I'm going to put the dress on the dress form inside out and mark the lining next. And you want the lining to be about half an inch shorter than the dress when it's finished. Okay, so you need to mark that one, mark the dress, trim it, put the dress on inside out, mark the lining, trim it, and then we'll be ready to sew the hem. Okay, we have our hem trimmed away. So I marked it all the way around. I went to my rotary mat and I just trimmed it away along those marks. And now I'm ready to actually complete my hem on the outer dress. So like I said, for tricky fabrics, the three-step narrow hem might not work and for thicker fabrics as well. So it definitely wouldn't work with these um, thick little embroidered dots. So for this one, I did a few tests first to figure out what method I wanted to use. And I decided I'm gonna do a doubled up quarter inch hem and then hand stitch it in place. So I'm going to do this one first. In the next chapter, we'll do the three-step narrow hem on the lining. Okay, so what we're going to do is put this in the machine and I'm going to first do a row of guide stitching the, all the way around the bottom at a quarter inch. This is one of my favorite sewing methods just for easy, it's an easy little trick. Anytime you need to fold something a really small distance, like a quarter inch, rather than measuring and going around the entire thing with the iron and burning your hands, you just do a line of guide stitching at a quarter inch and use that stitching as your guide. Okay, so I'm at the machine. I try to always start at a seam line when I'm doing something like this. I'm on a regular stitch length and I'm using a quarter inch seam allowance. And this is it. I'm just going to be going around the entire skirt at a quarter inch. All I'm doing is creating a little guide stitch here. going to finish this up and then we'll come back and we'll be at the iron and I'm going to show you how to press the hem up before hand stitching it. to the iron and I'm just going to press this up. Now I'm going to use that guide stitching to press up my hem. So take your guide stitching and roll it to the inside of the dress. You don't want it showing on the outside. So you're just using that as your sort of little personal ruler here. And you do have to go all the way around the dress twice now because we're going to be doing this once, pressing it up once, and then going back and doubling this hem and then hand stitching it. So this is the part where I wish it were, were like a cooking show where I had a whole chicken in the oven that was already done that I could pull out now, but I don't. So we just have to work on this one dress and go all the way around we're going to go around the dress hem twice 
and then it's a triple stitched narrow hem on the lining, so we'll go around that one five, uh, three times for a total of five times around this hem. So the hemming is a bit of a production, but so exciting when you finally get to finish the hemming and wear your dress. I pressed it up once all the way around. I'm gonna go back one more time and now I'm gonna double that hem. So fold it in on itself and now I have a doubled quarter inch hem here. And I usually find that it's not really necessary to pin this. It gets really fiddly on this little narrow hem with a lot of pins in here. Uh, you can if you feel you, that your fabric needs, needs it, but I tend to just kind of give it a little steam and it retains that press pretty well. All right, so I'm gonna double this up all the way around and then the next step will be to stitch it in place. Okay, I came all the way back around to the beginning where I started, and now I'm gonna hand stitch this hem in place all the way around. Okay, I'm not gonna make you watch me hand stitch this in place all the way around, but that's what I'm going to do. You could also um, edge stitch this hem in place. I found that the edge stitching really doesn't look good with these embroidered dots, which is why I've chosen to hand stitch this. But that's another option. If it works for your fabric, certainly feel free to machine stitch at this point. But let me just show you the next steps here if you're gonna hand stitch your hem. So just like our hand stitching earlier, you don't wanna to get too long a length of thread. I'm just going sort of fingertip to needle, tying this off. And here, I'll start kinda of right over here. And then you're gonna use a slip stitch, just like we did earlier. You're gonna come up through the fold of the hem, take just the littlest bite out of the dress. And here I have a seam allowance, so you don't have to be too careful. But now that I'm over, once you start kind of getting over past the seam allowance, you wanna be really very careful when you're grabbing the dress, taking that little bite out there, that you're just grabbing the smallest thread because you don't want this to show on the outside of the dress. So grab that little bite, and then you can tunnel through the hem like that. Again, another tiny little, just the tiniest thread on the outside of the dress. 
Then go ahead and tunnel through the hem. Tiny thread from the outside of the dress. Then a tunnel through. And all the way around like that. So you should see minimal stitching on the outside. This does show tiny little tiny little dots where the stitches are, but I think that's fine with the texture of the dress. So this is one hemming option. In the next chapter, I'm going to show you the triple stitched narrow hem, which I'm going to do on the lining. So let's come back for that. And then both of your, your inside and your outside dress will be hemmed. Now we're going to hem the lining and I'm going to use the three-step narrow hem that's detailed in the instructions. So this is a very beautiful, very fine hem that's perfect for this kind of lightweight cotton without any embroidery or surface detail on it. And the first thing to know about this hem is that you do have to go around the hem three times. And that's why it's called a three-step narrow hem. So you are going to be stitching the full length um, of or the full width of the um, three-quarter circle skirt three times. So keep that in mind. It does take a little while, but it's not difficult. Okay, so the first line of stitching we're going to do at three-eighths of an inch, and we're just doing this flat. Nothing is folded yet. You are just stitching. This is kind of like your guide stitching in some ways. But you're just stitching flat all the way around the hem. That's the first step complete. Now, the second line of stitching, you can just go right into this. You're gonna flip the whole thing around so that now the wrong side of the skirt lining is facing you, or the skirt, whichever one you're working on. And this is what's gonna go under the presser foot. Very important though that we need to turn this up, okay? So now you're turning the hem up once so that the line of stitching that you just did rolls just to the inside of the skirt. And now you're gonna stitch directly to the left of that line of stitching. Okay, so I'm just gonna turn it up as I go around, making sure that the line of stitching is to the inside of the skirt. And I'm stitching slightly to the left of that row of stitching. This line of stitching really should be just next to the line of stitching you just did. Not as much as an eighth of an inch. More like a sixteenth below that. Below an eighth. Okay, we've completed that line of stitching. And the next step, and this is before we can do the third line of stitching, you need to trim away from the, um, the turned up hem that we just did. So you need sort of a small pair of scissors that's very sharp. Just very carefully trim as close as you can to the line of stitching that you just did. Embroidery scissors work really well for this. Um, some people really like uh, applique scissors, also known as duck bill scissors, because they have that little bill on them that separates two layers from each other, so you can get really close to one of them. Um, I just like to use the sharpest scissors I have that are fairly small. 
So again, we're just going to trim all the way around this and then we have one step left of stitching for our third step of stitching. And then we'll be done with this hem. I just finished trimming everything and now I'm going to do my final row of stitching and for this one again you just want to turn up your hem one more time and again stitch to the left of the previous line of stitching, the one that you just did. And keep in mind that this line of stitching will now be your hem so it will show on the outside of the lining so you do want to keep it um, equal from the distance as much, I'm sorry, equidistant from the bottom of the garment as much as possible. Okay, so I'm just turning it in as I go and stitching right to the left of my last line of stitching. So this will be the last line of stitching that we do. And that was three lines of stitching, hence the name, the three-step hem. And that was your last line of stitching. So what you have here is just a really beautiful, very tiny, narrow hem. On the back, you'll see two lines of stitching on the front, just one. And it's very fine and narrow, which is great for this kind of lining and for a full skirt as well. So you might see some rippling along the hem now. And um, if you do, and even if you don't, now's the time that you wanna press this. You might notice that we haven't done any pressing throughout this hem. So the next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is press all the way around and use a little steam if you have any rippling and that will help set the whole thing flat. So don't worry if you're seeing those ripples now. Okay, so that is the end of this chapter on the three-step narrow hem. In the next chapter, we're gonna come back and we're going to talk about the optional waist day and then we're done sewing our dresses. final chapter we're going to be talking about the waist stay and I call it an optional waist stay in the instructions because it's not always necessary I do like to use them in my strapless garments but for whatever reason I haven't used it in every version of this dress that I've made because I find that this dress stays up really well on its own the way that it's fitting me so you may find that you may find that you want the additional security of a waist stay to kind of keep it from slipping down as you're wearing it um, and this will just help you give, give you a little extra anchor at the waist to hold the dress in place. And it's a great thing to know how to do. Um, you definitely want to use this skill for strapless dresses down the line. Okay, so you have your Petersham or Grosgrain ribbon. 
And then I'm going to be showing you the, the quick and easy way of doing this, which is using hook and eye tape as opposed to sewing on individual hooks and eyes. As I mentioned, I hate sewing on hooks and eyes, so anything to avoid that. Okay, so because I'm using the hook and eye tape, I cut this to my waist measurement exactly so that it fits very snugly around my waist with no seam allowance added here. If you're going to be sewing individual hooks and eyes, you'll want to follow the instructions where it tells you to cut an additional two inches of ribbon, and then you're going to be turning the ribbon in half an inch, half an inch again, and then hemming it by hand, and then sewing on those little individual hooks and eyes, so two sets of each. Two sets of each, yes, that's right. Okay, so you're going to be doing that, but because I didn't have the individual hooks and eyes, I didn't need to create that hem, because the hook and eye tape here actually wraps around the end of the ribbon and it finishes it, so it's pretty cool. Okay, so you're just gonna wrap it around the end. I'm doing the hooks on one side and I actually want the hooks to face in towards the body, so it's gonna end up being like this eventually, but I'm gonna wrap it this way and then kind of center it between those two sets of hooks and then pin this in place. I'm going to trim close here. The other great thing about this hook and eye tape is that the tape doesn't fray, so I don't need to finish this edge in any way. Okay, I'm going to put this into the machine. Um, let me turn this pin around. I'm using a zipper foot because I don't want to stip, stitch too close to the hooks and eyes because they're metal and they will break my needle. But I'm going to position my needle so that I can stitch right over here on the edge of this tape. And I'm making sure I'm stitching through both sides, the top and the bottom. I'm just using a straight stitch here. trimming real close again on my threads. Okay, so that is the hook side sewn on the right side of the ribbon. On the other side, I am going to sew the eye side. So I'm going to center it just like I did with the hooks. Pin it in place. And again, this tape just wraps around the edge of the ribbon. It's an amazing invention. I'm gonna trim it to length. Get this pin out of the way. So I'm pinned in place. I'm just going to check that I'm aligned here. It looks good. And now I'm again going to stitch by machine. So just checking my positioning that I'm not going to hit anything metal. hoping that I am stitching through both layers here, and I think I am good. Okay. And there we go. There is the eye side hook stitched in place, and I know that this hook and eye tape might not be quite as pretty as beautifully hand-stitched little hooks and eyes, but it'll do it for me because I don't have to actually hand-stitch those hooks and eyes, so I am happy. Now we're going to stitch this into the dress. Oops, mine's twisted there, but that's okay. It actually goes this way. There we go. Okay, so I'm just gonna grab the dress and pull it over here. You're gonna hand stitch this into the dress by hand, just tacking it in a few places. Okay, grab your dress. 
And the way you figure out the placement of this is that you divide the waist stay into quarters. Okay, so I'm gonna divide it like this, which will help me figure out where the front is, because the hooks and eyes go to the back. Okay, so now this fold will be the front, and I'm gonna give myself a pin there. Next, I want to divide it in half this way so that the pin meets the hooks and eyes in the back and then create little creases on the sides, which will correspond to the side seams. Okay, so I'm gonna pin that. So I'm just pin marking here. Now this gets placed inside the dress. And here, my center front mark is gonna go at center front. You're going to thread a needle, a hand sewing needle. And all you do here, I'm just gonna raise this up so you can see it, is just come up through the ribbon at the base. And I'm stitching, I'm creating a little tack through the seam allowances. So through the ribbon, and then through the seam allowances below. I can remove that pin now. And it only gets attached at the base like this, okay? So when you feel you have enough stitches that it's sturdy, you can finish off that stitching. I'm just gonna hide my knot underneath. Okay, tied that off. And then we're gonna do two more of those, one at each side seam where we pin marked. And then just leave the back open. You don't need to tack this in anywhere along the back. So again, I'm just using a doubled up thread. Okay, next you're gonna match up your pin mark with one of your side seams. And again, same thing, just a super easy tack. It's just a straight stitch going on top of each, going on top of itself several times to create a nice strong anchor here. Okay, final tack. This pin goes to this final side seam. I'm just knotting off this final tack here. And voila, there is your waist stay. So when you go to put on the dress, just hook yourself into it with the waist stay first, okay? And then actually the great thing about that too is that it helps you zip up the dress on your own because it's anchored at the waist and then it's easy to close. So you're gonna hook yourself in with the waist stay first and then that will help keep the dress really secure throughout the time you're wearing it. Okay, so your dress is done. We're gonna come back for one final chapter. I'm going to put on my dress to show it off a little and I will see you in a bit.
Okay, we did it. Here is my finished dress, and I hope yours is finished and you love it. I just wanted to talk a little bit about what we learned because it's been a lot. So we talked in the beginning about choosing a size, fitting, making a muslin, and then we got right into bodice sewing, and hopefully you learned a lot from all those really advanced skills like underlining with muslin, uh, boning aligning, working with that spiral steel boning, and then we went into constructing the skirt, and you learned a few methods for hemming and then inserting a waist stay. I wanted to show you two different versions of this dress that I've made using the same pattern, just different fabric choices to show you what you can do with the pattern. The one on my left here, this was made in this beautiful pink and silver Lurex fabric. I saw this at Mood Fabrics and just fell in love with it because it reminded me of Marilyn Monroe. So I just used a dressier fabric on this. The construction skills are entirely the same. Muslin underlining on the bodice and then a cotton lining throughout. So it's really just a totally different feel based on the fabric choice here. The one on my right, this one I did a few different things with it to, to give it some different design choices. So I wore this dress to go see Dita Von Teese and I wanted something that felt very befitting of meeting the queen. So I chose a red silk satin here for the bodice and the skirt. And then on the lining, I just have this asymmetrical peekaboo effect here with a flocked tool lining underneath. And then I used that same flock tool on the halter straps and then just a solid mesh as the backing here so you didn't see show through from the polka dots on it. So very different choices over here, but again, similar construction. There's a muslin underlining on this one. The lining is exactly the same. It's just using a sheer fabric. Um, and then the steel boning throughout. So the skills are the same, just different choices on the fabric and that asymmetrical hem. So I just want to congratulate you because this kind of sewing is so rare these days, I feel, where we're so focused on fast and easy projects. So it says a lot about you that you really want to delve into a complex project like this. So I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you love your new L'Amour dress. And if you want to keep going with these skills, I would really recommend that you look at some of my books, especially Gertie's Ultimate Dress Book, where I have a strapless bodice that you can do a lot of different designs with. So I hope you love it. Thank you so much for coming on this little journey with me.